Noise Analysis in Operational Amplifier Circuits. Welcome to this module on Noise Analysis in Operational Amplifier Circuits from Texas Instruments. This module will overview the noise and discuss the types, characteristics, and calculations of the noise. This TechCast is 22 pages in length and lasts just over 20 minutes. Early investigators of noise likened spontaneous fluctuations of current and voltage in electric circuits to Brownian motion. In 1928, uh, Johnson showed that electrical noise was a significant problem for electrical engineers designing sensitive amplifiers. The limit to the sensitivity of an electrical circuit is set by the point in which the signal-to-noise ratio drops below acceptable limits. In op-amp circuits, burst noise and avalanche noise are normally not problems, or they can be eliminated if present. They are mentioned here for completeness, but are not considered in the noise analysis. Since noise sources have amplitudes that vary randomly with time, they can only be specified by a probability density function. Thermal noise and shot noise have Gaussian probability density functions. The other forms of noise noted do not. If delta is the standard deviation of the Gaussian distribution, then the instantaneous value lies between the average value of the signal and plus or minus delta 68% of the time. By definition, delta squared, or variance, is the average mean square variation about the average value. This means that in noise signals having Gaussian distributions of amplitude, the average mean square variation about the average value, I squared or E squared, is the variance, delta squared, and the RMS value is the standard deviation, delta. Theoretically, the noise amplitude can have values approaching infinity. However, the probability falls off rapidly as amplitude increases. An effective limit is plus or minus 3 times delta, since the noise amplitude is within these limits 99.7% of the time. The figure shows graphically how the probability of the amplitude relates to the RMS value. With multiple noise sources in a circuit, the signals must be combined properly to obtain the overall noise signal. A pure sine wave has power at only one frequency. Noise power, on the other hand, is spread over the frequency spectrum. Voltage noise power density, E squared over hertz, and current noise power density, I squared over hertz, are often used in noise calculations. To calculate the mean square value, the power density is integrated over the frequency of operation. This application report deals with noise that is constant over frequency and noise that is proportional to 1 over F. Spectrally flat noise is referred to as white noise. When plotted versus frequency, white noise is a horizontal line of constant value. When plotted versus frequency on log-log scales, 1 over F noise is a line with constant slope. If the power density, V squared over Hertz, is plotted, the slope is negative 1 decade per decade. If the square root of the power density, VRMS, over the square root of Hertz, is plotted, the slope is negative 0.5 decade per decade. The figure shows the spectra of 1 over F and white noise per root Hertz. To determine the noise or current voltage over a given frequency band, the beginning and ending frequencies are used as the F integration limits and the integral evaluated. The left figure shows the equivalent input noise voltage versus frequency graph for the TLV2772 as normally displayed in the datasheet. FNC can be determined visually from the graph of equivalent input noise per root hertz versus frequency graph that is included in most op-amp data sheets. Since at FNC the white noise and 1 over F noise are equal, FNC is the frequency at which the noise is the square root of 2 times white noise specification. This would be about 17 nanovolts per square root hertz for the TLV2772, which is at 1000 hertz as shown in the figure. 
the right figure was constructed by interpreting the equivalent input noise voltage versus frequency graph for the TLV2772 and plotting the values on log log scales. The negative 0.5 decade over decade straight line nature of 1 over F noise when plotted on log log scales can be seen. In reality, there is always a certain amount of out-of-band energy transferred. The equivalent noise bandwidth, ENB, is used to account for the extra noise. Figure 1 shows the idea for a first-order low-pass filter. Figure 2 shows an example of a simple RC filter used to filter a voltage noise source, E sub IN. To reiterate, noise in a resistor can be modeled as a voltage source in series or as a current source in parallel with an otherwise noiseless resistor. Op-amp manufacturers measure the noise characteristics for a large sampling of a device. This information is compiled and used to determine the typical noise performance of the device. The noise specifications published by Texas Instruments in their data sheets refer the measured noise to the input of the op amp, the part of an internally generated noise that can be properly represented by a voltage source is placed in series with the positive input to an otherwise noiseless op amp, the part of the internally generated noise that can be properly represented by current sources is placed between each input and ground in an otherwise noiseless op amp. The figure shows the resulting noise model for a typical op amp. To perform a noise analysis, the foregoing noise models are added to the circuit schematic and the input signal sources are shorted to ground. When this is done to either an inverting or a non-inverting op amp circuit, the same circuit results as shown in the figure. This circuit is used for the following noise analysis. At first, this analysis may appear somewhat daunting, but it can be deciphered piece by piece. Using the principles of superposition, each of the noise sources is isolated and everything else is assumed to be noiseless. Then the results can be added according to the rules for adding independent noise sources. An ideal op amp is assumed for the noiseless op amp. In the end, it will all seem simple, if a little tedious, the first time through. Now consider the noise sources associated with the op amp itself. The analysis proceeds as before, as shown in the figure above. A noise analysis for a differential amplifier can be done in the same manner as the previous example. The figure above shows the circuit used for the analysis. At first, this analysis may appear somewhat daunting, but it can be deciphered piece by piece. Using the principles of superposition, each of the noise sources is isolated and everything else is assumed to be noiseless. Then the results can be added according to the rules for adding independent noise sources. An ideal op amp is assumed for the noiseless op amp. In the end, it will all seem simple, if a little tedious the first time through. The above figures show the analysis. Combining to arrive at the solution for the circuit's output RMS noise voltage, ER RMS due to the thermal noise in the resistors in the circuit. Now consider the noise sources associated with the op amp itself. The analysis proceeds as before as shown in the figures. Combining to arrive at the solution for the circuit's output RMS noise voltage, E sub OA RMS, due to the input referred op amp noise in the circuit. Now combine the resistor noise and the op amp noise to get the total output RMS noise voltage E sub T RMS. In the last equation where A equals R1 plus R2 over R1, I sub W is the white current noise specification, spectral density in amps over square root of hertz. FINC is the current noise corner frequency. EW is the white voltage noise specification, spectral density in volts over square root of hertz and FENC is the voltage noise corner frequency. ENB is determined by the frequency characteristics of the circuits. 
FH over FL is set equal to ENB. The techniques presented here can be used to perform a noise analysis on any circuit. Superposition was chosen for illustrative purposes, but the same solutions can be derived by using other circuit analysis techniques.